Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to have Dr. Leonardo Volis with us today. Um, he is working in Australia and um, he's going to introduce himself to us. So could you say hello to the students here and introduce yourself? Well, hello, everyone. Hello, Lynn. Thank you for the invitation. Um, my name is Leonardo Valis. Um, I live in Australia. I live in Sydney. So if you've ever heard of Australia or Sydney or any other part of Australia, I live in the land of koalas and kangaroos. So uh, could you give a tip to students who want to study abroad in Australia? Well, the first thing, the first thing that I would encourage students to be mindful of is do some research on where you want to live or where you want to study. Because in Australia, like in many other countries as well, uh, the cost of living can vary significantly from one place to the next. If you're planning to come to Sydney, for example, um, if you if you want to be living close to the Opera House, Sydney Harbour Bridge and all these highlights and landmarks of Australia, it could be quite expensive, even if you even if you're planning to rent a single room, you know, in a flat somewhere near the CBD. So I would encourage you to do a lot of research on where you want to live and where you want to be based in. So that's number one. In terms of studying, um, it's also important to do a lot of research before you come so you know where you're going to study, um, what you're going to study. We've got a number of different options available in Australia, ranging from what we call RTOs, um, which are like small private organisations that offer um, different qualifications like certificate, courses, uh, diploma courses, um, or if you're planning to come to Australia to do language courses, there's a wide range of um, organizations and colleges and even universities that offer a range of um, courses in language, English language. Um, if you were dreaming of the idea of pursuing some further studies and maybe do a degree at a college or university, we also have a wide range of options. We've got higher education colleges, we've got universities all around Sydney, all around New South Wales and Australia. So research is really important. Do some research, have a browse on um, a number of different websites that we have available uh, through the Australian government where we provide advice and recommendations to international students wanting to visit Australia. So mm -hmm. options, there are many options available, um, plenty of options available for you to live uh, or study, uh, but it's important to do some good enough research before you start planning your life. Right, yeah, yeah, doing research and now with the internet and with a lot of resources, uh, we hope that students can find the right place uh, to ask questions. So let's talk about sport. Uh, what is your favorite sport? My favorite sport, I'm not a very sports <laughs> person, right? So I'm, I'm not really much into sports, um, but I used to play tennis a lot, um, probably until my third child was born. So it's ever since my third child was born, life became busier and busier, right? So three children, busy life. My wife uh, resumed her studies as well, a full-time job and uh, a lot of other commitments as well. So yes, yeah, so up until maybe 2015, I used to play tennis regularly, at least once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. So in answering the question, what is my favorite sport? I would say tennis. I'm not a soccer person. I'm not a football person. I'm not a rugby person, um, but I love tennis. I love watching tennis and I love playing tennis okay. when I have the time. Yeah, obviously you love tennis um, and you played uh, until uh, recently. So that's better than what 
but I do. I don't play any sports. Uh, what is the most popular sport in your country? Okay, yeah, the most popular sport in Australia is something we call footy, right? F O O T Y, footy. So we call the sport footy, which is something that looks like, I'm not familiar with the rules. I'm not familiar with, you know, the, the specifics of the sport and the regulations and everything, but it's, it's something similar to rugby, right? Mm. So it's like an Australian version of rugby, mm. right? Um, and they call it footy. So when you say in Australia, when you say we're going to play football, football is not soccer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Football is not American football, mm -hmm. right? Football in Australia is footy and footy is the Australian version of rugby. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's very interesting to know. And just uh, you only learn this kind of information when you talk to people from different countries. So I'm so glad that I'm talking to you and learn about these things as well. I hope you learned some interesting information from the interview. Let's review some interesting language. Highlight is used when you want to describe an interesting part or an important part of something. I may ask you a question like, what are the highlights of the week for you? It means what are some interesting parts of the week for you? Landmark uh, refers to a famous place, a popular place uh, in a city, for example, uh, that everybody knows. So for example, in Sydney, then the Opera House and the Sydney Harbour Bridge are the important landmarks of the city. Vary is used when you want to talk about how things change or how things differ from one place to another. For example, you may say the cost of living in Vietnam vary from one place to another. In some places, it is low, and in some other places, the cost of living is high. You can also say, for example, stu uh, student motivation varies from one student to another. Some students have high motivation and some students have low motivation. Another word that may be new to you is the word resume. Resume is when you continue to do something after a break, after some kind of break. In addition, when you need to give a speech, uh, a one minute or a two minute speech, you may need to organize your ideas and you may want to use organizing language. For example, Dr. Willis um, uses the first thing is, and then he summarizes the first point by saying that's number one. And he transitions to another point by saying in terms of, so you can use it to introduce another topic. In addition, when you wanna express quantities, there are different ways of doing that. Sometimes students use the word a lot quite often. That is okay in speaking, but especially in writing, you may wanna explore different ways of expressing quantities. In the interview, Dr. Valise uses um, a number of different options ranging from uh, a wide range of. As you know, stress and intonation are very important in English pronunciation. When you pronounce a word with multiple syllables, you need to know what sound to put the stress on. Uh, similarly, when you say a phrase, you also need to know what word or what sound to put the stress on. So I'm going to help you to practice pronouncing a few words uh, and a few short phrases with the same principle. Let's put the stress on just one prominent sound. America, America. The stress is on the second syllable. I think of you, I think of you. Argentina, Argentina. The stress is on the third syllable. Take a number, take a number. Do you like him? Do you like him? Have an orange, have an orange. Engineer, 
engineer, get the map, take the class, meet the boy. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to see more videos like this regularly, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notification so that you know when a new video is posted. In addition, if you want to practice speaking with other students, please join our Facebook group called Juling Everyday English. See you next time. Bye.